Welcome into the special edition of On Texas Football NCAA Tournament Style. Texas Longhorn season is over uh, in embarrassing fashion, in my estimation. Uh, 17 turnovers, many unforced, sloppy with the basketball. Tyrese Hunter traveled on an inbounds play, just like he did against Miami last year in the NCAA Tournament. Three turnovers on inbounds passes by Tyrese Hunter, who started 106 games at high major level in college basketball. It wasn't till late in the game that Rodney Terry actually took Tyrese Hunter off as the inbounds man. I don't know. I think I would have done that a lot earlier in the game if my guy was melting down mentally. That was not a good coaching decision to keep having Tyrese Hunter inbounding the ball after he melted down mentally. Same errors that have been made before, same errors that have been made this season. That's why it was an embarrassing loss for me because this is Tyrese Hunter started 105 games, in, traveled on the inbounds play in the NCAA tournament in an elimination game for the second year in a row. And then three inbounds turnovers should have been four. He just threw one to half court, got lucky. That one wasn't stolen as well. And Rodney Terry still had him inbounding the ball until he had to take the ball out of his hands. That is why it's embarrassing on both accounts. That's unacceptable at this level, and the stakes are this high. Bottom line, it was an ugly game. Both teams, ugly game. Texas shoots 36.4 from the field, Tennessee 33.8. Tennessee couldn't throw it in the ocean from three, three of 25. Both teams took each other out of what they wanted to do off offensively, which is a lot of ball screen game. Um, and so, so, some, so some, somebody's just saying, I'm drunk. I'm not drunk at all. I'm just going to call it like I see it. You can't have three inbounds play turnovers by a guard that started 105 games and travels on the inbounds in the NCAA tournament for the second year in a row, and you can't continue to let that guy inbound the ball when he's melting down mentally in the game. You gave away too many possessions in what you knew was going to be a slugfest of a game. Rick Barnes is going to bully you. He's going to make it a tough game, an ugly game. That's what he does. That's what Kelvin Sampson does. You cannot turn the ball over on the inbounds that many times, give away possessions. Texas had 17 turnovers. Ziegler's a really good defender, quick, pest. But I would bet 12 of those turnovers were unforced. At the end of the day, if you go back and watch the tape, 12 unforced turnovers. So, I, I you know, here's the at the end of the day, and I'm going to take your questions. But that's that's what it is. When you shoot 36% from the field and you have 17 turnovers, three turnovers on inbounds, including a travel on an inbounds, yeah, it's an embarrassing loss. That's an embarrassing way to go out in the NCAA tournament. If you looked at any part of that game other than the last three minutes, you thought it was ugly basketball and a lot of unforced ugly basketball. So, yes, that's an embarrassing a uh, loss. There's no way around it. I mean, there's not. There's just no way around it. And, and now, so people will say well, we lost to a four seed. Okay, great. But you know what? They couldn't throw it in the ocean. They were three of twenty-five from three. You had seventeen turnovers again. I mean, I can keep running this out, uh, but it was an that was an embarrassing uh, basketball game, no doubt about it. Um, so I'll take. We're going to take your questions. Um, you know, and look, and here's the thing, too. Uh, so a Acemus is going to catch some uh, a two seed Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee's a two seed. Um, but uh, look, here's the thing. If if Ace, if Tyrese Hunter's not playing well, then it's really easy to hard hedge and get the ball out of Max Acemus's hands. Because when the ball's reversed, where if Tyrese Hunter's not playing well, and he was six turnovers in the game, six turnovers in the game, um, then, you know, look, they, Texas is in a tough spot offensively. Disu had a tough night. Uh, some people would say maybe a little too three point, too many three point shots, 13 in two NCAA tournament games. He had some tough shots that rimmed out as well, though. I mean, that's that's the thing. 
Um, that that's the thing. He had some tough misses as well. But uh, you know, P, some people are going to say, look, it's not embarrassing. Look to me, if you go out with 17 turnovers and the mo- a lot of them are unforced, and Tyrese Hunter has three turnovers on inbounds passes, a guy that started 106 games in Power Five basketball. Yeah, that's embarrassing. And then continuing then not making the change until late in the game to take him out of inbounding the basketball. Yeah, I, I would say that's embarrassing for me. I mean, that that's uh that that it is embarrassing. I'm glad some people are, are agreeing with that. That's just not that's not what you want to see. That's not how you're supposed to lose games at this level at this point in the season when your season's on the line. No way around it. Look and 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 it's been a real struggle uh, at times for Tyrese Hunter this year. And I hate to say it, but it is, let's call it a spade a spade. I mean, he melted down early in that game. Texas had a lot of unforced turnovers. You credit Ziegler for attacking Texas defensively. They do a good job attacking the shoulders in the ball screen game, right? They do a good job taking away what you want to do. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, you can't have 17 turnovers and you can't have that many unforced turnovers and you can't have that many turnovers on inbounds. You can't travel on inbounds. I mean, you can't, that's just unacceptable for players that have started this many games. And it happened in the Miami game last year was part of a big run and it happened again tonight. So am I being too hard on it? Maybe, but maybe I'm not. So we'll see. Uh, Again, Kendall Weaver was tremendous. Uh, Just a tremendous effort, brings tremendous energy. Um, You know, again, he's a guy who next year, compare. watch how much he develops between now and next year because that guy's going to will himself to be a good shooter and to maximize whatever he's got in the tank. And he's he's starting in a good place. Um, but you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, look, Dalton connect goes five of 18 Ziegler goes two of 12. They go seven of 30. They go three of 25 from three. They combine those, the Tennessee's three of 25 Ziegler and connect combined for two of 16 from three. If I'd given you those numbers before the game, what would you said? You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's just the reality. Uh, menu two sports agree with you 100%. Thank you for that super chat. Embarrassing. I see Texas losing a lot. How confident are you, RT? We'll have a better team next season. Uh, our, Texas will have big guards next year. Okay, so it's going to look different from a guard standpoint. Um, Trey Johnson, 6'6", future NBA first-round pick. Texas hasn't had a shooting guard like this in a long time. Uh, Cam Scott, 6'5", uh, really athletic, became a much better shooter as a senior, he was just named Gator, South Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, is, is a that the ability to shoot the ball? He's improved there, whether it's off the catch, whether it's off the dribble. Uh, but again, a guy that I think is a future NBA draft pick. So Texas has big guards coming in. They're going to be young guards next year, uh, but they have some big guards coming in that they haven't had um, in the program for a while. They haven't had a guy like Trey Johnson. I mean, Texas had really good point guards, combo guards come through the program. You know, you go back to TJ Ford and DJ Augustine at point guard. Corey Joseph is a combo guard, right? Jacobin Brown was a really talented combo guard. You kind of go down the list. Um, but a 6'6 shooting guard that can go get his shot and can go create buckets for his team uh, that, that's projected to be a lottery pick. Texas hasn't really had one of those guys. Uh, but they're going to be young at guard next year. Um, so. So I don't. So I'll take your. Uh, I'm going to take your shot. Uh, take take your shots if you want to give me shots. We'll take your questions as well. Uh, Tennessee out rebounded Texas 42 36. You know, look, 14 offensive rebounds. That's where Tennessee does. Rick Barnes teams are always get after you on the offensive glass, right? Uh, Tennessee shot 33 percent from the field. Texas did a good job defensively. Tennessee also missed a lot of looks. Both teams missed a lot of looks. These two missed some good looks at three. Uh, from good spots on the floor. Uh, but uh, Tennessee is going to bang you on the offensive glass. That's what they do. Uh, they're a very good weak side offensive rebounding team. They always have been under Rick Barnes. Just think back to James Thomas. Um, a lot of times Rick Barnes will get his teams, have his teams get shots up on the rim and position themselves to weak side rebound. Draw defensive rotation, get weak side rebounds. Uh, but, you know, both both teams played well defensively. Uh, we got to give both teams credit for playing well defensively. 
Uh, you knew Rick Barnes was going to make it a rugged, as rugged of a game as possible, as he possibly could. Uh, same thing Kelvin Sampson does. Uh, both those guys are very good at that. Uh, that is a strength of theirs. Um, but, you know, look, look you, can't, you can't get to this point in the season uh, and have 17 turnovers. Tyrese Hunter can't turn the ball over six times, three of them on inbounds. You can't travel on an inbounds. You did it last year against Miami in the Elite Eight game. You cannot travel on inbounds. You've started 105 games. I'm going to keep saying it, but that's unacceptable. And that's those were embarrassing turnovers at this point in the season, the embarrassing turnovers. And I thought it was embarrassing to let him continue to inbounds the ball until three minutes to go or four minutes to go when you had no choice but to take it out of his hands on the inbounds. Should have done it way before that. It was clear he Tyrese was melting down in the first half. And you continue to let him inbound the ball. And, again, it, he threw another one in the half court that should have been stolen. Got lucky on that. Uh, but you, just, you can't do that at this level. You just can't do it. Um, you know, and then somebody's pointing out the, the one that uh, – the pass that was thrown the Weaver's feet uh, by Tyree Hunter on the cut. You know, that was – I think that was a turnover credited next year, accredited to Tyrese Hunter as well. Uh, Michael Williams, uh, thank you for the super chat. Who comes back next year? Um, you know, look, Kendall Weaver will be back next year. You would think Caden Shedrick will be back next year. Devon Pryor, Devin Pryor, uh, six seven freshman wing. He's got a bright future. He graduated high school early, used it as a development year. Um, so he, he should be a capable wing player for Texas next year. We'll see where the kind of the roster goes after that. Um, I think Texas will uh, look in the portal at point guard. They got two really good guards coming in, Nick Cody, 6'9". Uh, kind of a face-up four uh, who missed part of his senior season with a knee injury. He'll be back. Um, uh, he'll be a freshman next year, I should say. I think they'll sign probably another high school guy. I think they'll go get two bigs in the portal plus point guard in the portal. I think they may end up with four guys out of the portal, uh, it, it, you know, in this class. And one of those will probably be a wing shooter type of player as well if they can find those guys. Um, so, that's and people are saying um, need a veteran point guard. Yes, I agree. I think Trey Johnson can handle the ball in the ball screen game. He is a very good player. He's a smart basketball player, very instinctive offensive player, will make plays for other in the ball screen game. But when people take that away, I think you do you need somebody. Uh, you're not going to find a Ziegler, but you need somebody who can attack off the bounce and really create forced rotations. Uh, can create for other players uh, through those rotations, can get to the paint and create uh, those quick forced rotations by the opponent in the drive and kick game. Uh, so I, it'll be interesting to see. Texas will definitely go after a po uh, point guard on the portal. Aloha, Traveler. Uh, how many? Thank you for the super chat. How many portal spots will, are available for Texas this offseason, and how confident are you RT can actually land portal talent? Look, I'm, I'm confident Texas can land. Uh, talent. Uh, Texas can compete um, in the NIL game in basketball uh, for sure. Uh, and I think, look, there's it, it, it's in a, it's got great facilities. Um, it, it's an open offense. Uh, kids like the offense, right? They like the freedom of the offense. Uh, so I think Texas will attract players. I don't think Frank Rodney Terry's a tremendous recruiter. Frank Haith is a tremendous recruiter. Um, so I, I don't think that's going to be the issue. I think the, the hard thing about the basketball portal to me is it's the timing of when guys enter the portal um, and how do you put that roster together without going too quickly on a player and then you have regrets three weeks later when somebody else jumps in the portal. Because the reality is you may you may have a feel for when some kids are who, – who's going to jump in the portal, but you never fully have fully – full context of who all is going to jump in the portal and win. If you think back the last year, Texas had Max Asmus, Tyrese Hunter goes to the draft bars, comes back, and then Cam Spencer at UConn, who they, Texas really wanted. But by the time Cam Spencer got in the jump in the portal, not that they would have beat out UConn for him, but when Cam Spencer jumped in the portal, then Texas already had two guys that were going to have ball in hand. So that didn't make a lot of sense for Cam Spencer uh, to come to Texas at that point. Not saying that Texas would have beat out UConn, but I'm using that as an example of when guys jump in the portal, the timing of it is what makes college basketball tough as far as constructing your roster. 
so I, I think Texas will attract talent. I think they have two dynamite recruiters on this staff. I think they do a good job in research uh, through the portal. Um, and I think, look, I, I think that at the end of the day, Texas is still looking for a, a high school big, but I think two bigs out of the portal. But one of those guys have to, has to be able to face up and shoot the basketball. While Dylan DeSue didn't shoot it well uh, in the NCAA tournament, having a guy that has the ability to shoot the basketball and help spread the floor is so key in the college game for me. Uh, Three-point line's not 23-9 like it is in the NBA. So the spacing, it gets more condensed in the college game. So it's tougher to play two bigs if, if neither of them can face up and shoot the ball in the college game. Then it, it's tough to drive the ball for your guards. It's tough to get to the paint. So I, one of the guys Texas takes out of the portal, they need some toughness on the interior, some ruggedness that can protect the rim and rebound. But one of those two portal guys needs to be able to shoot the basketball. Uh, one of those bigs has to be able to shoot it so you can keep that floor spaced in the college game. Um, so... Daniel Sheehan, uh, thank you for the super chat. You're right on Hunter. Jerry, do you think Hunter's the biggest fraud bust in Texas basketball? Um, look, it, that's a it, Tyrese Hunter has been a mystery to me. Um, he was the Big 12 freshman of the year. Uh, and Chris Beard, Rodney Terry, the guys, they he was handpicked, man, when he went to the portal as the point guard uh, for Chris Beard and that staff at the time. And, you know, the one thing about Tyrese is his, his assist turnover was never that of a – guy that you were going to put the ball in his hands and kind of break people down and create offense for others. Uh, but I think this year, this year, Tyrese ended up being a real mystery uh, to me in that, you know, the play was so up and down. Um, the, the, the play was so up and down. The highs were so high and the lows were so low in Tyrese's game this year that it brought so much inconsistency. Uh, to Texas. I mean, you just look at you just look at the game tonight. You know, you just have six turnovers, and yeah, he made some. He made three plays late in that game. One was a twenty-seven foot three, right? He made three plays in that game. But what got you to the point where you had to make all that had all that pressure on you to close the gap and work so hard to come back and have a chance to win the game? You can't have three inbound turnovers on inbounds passes. You can't do it in round of 32 in the NCAA tournament. So, and they, Tyrese was just, he, I've never seen a player that was so up and down this season in a third year in college basketball for having so many starts uh, as a college basketball player. I mean, you think about it, he has a career high 30 against Oklahoma. He doesn't make a field goal the next game against Kansas State. There were the three games this year. Uh, Iowa State at Marquette and Kansas State. He was 0 for 21 combined in those games. I mean, that level of inconsistency, highs and lows, uh, from a guy that plays 30, 32 minutes is really being counted on. Uh, puts you in a, it puts you in a tough spot. And what that does is for the teams that are good enough, Houston, Tennessee, the teams that are really good defensively and have the personnel to push Texas ball screen game, the one the two man game with Disu and Acemus is really good. There are a few teams that can push that out, Acemus out to 28 feet, 28, 30 feet, and then you hard hedge and you get the ball out of his hands. If you get the ball out of Acemus's hands at 28, 29 feet, then Disu's catching it at 24 feet. Well, that negates the ability to take one dribble, get to the rim. So then that disrupts the timing and flow of what you want to do in the two-man game. But off that, if Tyrese Hunter's not giving you anything, that puts you in a bind offensively. So uh, Tyrese was so up and down. Um, you know, that that's uh, – uh, it, it, it's tough. And no, Topolino, yeah, look, you know, I'm, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not drunk. I'm just calling it, calling it what it is. Um, just tell, telling you like it is, man. Justin Yarbrough, Jerry, will Terry need to improve coaching-wise to improve next season? How many players do you think uh, Texas should take from the portal? I think Texas need to take four from the portal. Um, that, that's where I think this is going to go. I think a point guard, I think two bigs, maybe a shooter wing role player. Um, again, how that roster take it kind of how it builds here in the portal. Because, again, it's timing. You can't rush into some guys not knowing – uh, you know, who's coming, who's going to put their name in the portal later. It's just, it's such a timing game in the portal. But for what Texas needs, need a point guard, 
They need two bigs. Probably need a wing shooter um, is, is what I think when I look at the Texas roster, what they need. And that's assuming, you know, Caden Shetter does come back, which Caden Shetter should come back next year, get those shoulders healthy. Uh, and I think he'll be a more physical player with those shoulders healthy and he'll have a chance to develop uh, in the offseason because he didn't have an offseason. He didn't have a summer. Uh, Dylan DeSue didn't have a summer either. Um, but, uh, you know, Harrison, we're good uh, question. Um, what's the what's the point of having Dylan Mitchell on the floor if he can't score the basketball? So, again, that's kind of that's the pickle uh, that, that Texas gets into at times is, look, Dylan Mitchell is a plus defender in that he has versatility. So if you run if you're switching in the ball screen game, if you're switching things um, and you have and he's also a guy that can rotate and can challenge shots. Right. But if you're switching ball screen games, if you're hedging in the ball screen game, Dylan Mitchell has a lot of defensive value because he's your most versatile guy. And he's not a wing. He's a college four. Um, but he's your most versatile defender in that scenario. But the flip side is, offensively, if if Dylan DeSue or Max Asmus, either one of those guys, or both have an off night and Tyrese Hunter is, is, is mentally out of it like he was in the first half and mentally melted down – then what can Dylan Mitchell give you offensively? That's where you get into uh, issues on the offensive end because Tennessee wasn't going to guard Dylan Mitchell. They weren't going to guard him. You've seen a lot of teams not guard him this year. Uh, so that put a lot of emphasis on Asmus and Disu playing really well. Um, but, uh, you know, Oscar Elizondo, surely I'm late, but Jerry, what the heck was that last shot? Look, Mac, that, that's a play they've run for Max this year. Max has made game winners going to his right. I mean, some have been a mid-range, some have been at three, whether it's in the games, in the halves. They just ran that same action for Max, and he got the corner turn and took the layup. Uh, so it, it's not anything they haven't run this year. It's not anything they haven't had success with Max on this year. He's a tough shot taker. He's a tough shot maker going right. So I wasn't surprised by that at the end of the game. Tennessee closed off. They weren't going to uh, – they were going to force Max to take a tougher shot and get him deeper to the corner. Uh, but Max has made those this year. If you go back and watch his tape, it's not the most high percentage shot, but it's shots he has made in his career, and it's shots he's made this year for Texas. Um, so that's uh, Daniel Sheehan. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, uh, I, I, th I, I don't know what to say. I mean, people think I'm going to be hard on Tyree Center, but, I mean, don't y'all want a spade, call a spade at this point? Um, so, you know, Tennessee, but Tennessee does play great defense, W.A. Jones. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we give credit to Tennessee and we knew Rick Barnes is a great defensive coach. He's going to make it rugged too. That's the thing he wanted to be. He wanted to out physical Texas in this game. He wanted to do the exact same things that Kelvin Sampson did successfully against Texas. That is, that's the smart game plan. Um, so if you're physical, and you can wear down Dylan DeSue over time, right? If you're physical with him, uh, Dylan DeSue, I thought, played. Dylan played a really good game other than shots not going in tonight, though. He had a couple of tough rim outs inside 10 feet. He played hard on the defensive end. Some people argue he didn't He didn't foul on that last, the last one against uh, I, I do, but I think, you know, he got the wrist, right? Bang, bang, play. If you call it, they call it. If they don't, you'd be like, yeah, you know, you can see why uh, the refs let that go. Um, but, uh, you know, and look, Kenny Matthews, look, connect wasn't good tonight either. Uh, that, that's, that's the reality. Dalton connect five of 18, one of eight from three, Tennessee got a lot of good looks from three. They just missed a lot of shots. I mean, uh, I thought Tennessee got more good looks than Texas did. Uh, Texas ended up seven of 23 from three, uh, Ace Miss hit a couple late. D Sue hit one late. Kendall Weaver hit a three Tyrese Hunter with the 28 footer, man. Uh, so you know, and Bones, yeah, DC did play hard tonight. He had a couple of tough, uh, tough misses in there as well. Uh, Antoine, need Devin Pryor to play next year. Yeah, Devin Pryor's got to come on for this team. Uh, there's no doubt about it. He's got to be a wing. Uh, look, Texas has to have a true college wing. Um, you can't enforce when Texas won that big lineup this year for those uh, that were fo followed me on, you know, on Texas football or whatnot. The big lineup wasn't going to work this year because that was not a space floor five. You can't space the floor with with uh, with Caden Shedrick when DC was out, Dylan Mitchell 
Brock Cunningham, Punter, and Ace Miss, you weren't going to be able to space the floor like you needed to in college basketball with that lineup. So Texas needs to get a true wing. Uh, Devin Pryor's development between now and next year is big. Now, the flip side of that is you recruit a point guard out of the portal, maybe see what Chris Johnson does in his development, uh, but you recruit a point guard out of the portal, suddenly you can put a Trey Johnson on the wing. You can put a Cam Scott on the wing, and suddenly you have guards that are 6'5", 6'6", that can handle the length of some others and still break you down and go get a shot for you. But that's putting a lot on two freshman guards. So that's te- Devin Pryor needs to come on. Texas needs to recruit somebody out of the portal to help with that tr- with that transition as well. Um, you know, Kyle Weathersman, we're not big down low, killed us all season. You know, it, it's interesting is um, with Texas is Texas was in the Elite Eight last year. And the one thing I'd kind of said, because people were saying, where was Chris Beard going to get a big man? Well, I was like, well, you know, they got Trey Mitchell. They had enough pieces that year one. Then Trey Mitchell wasn't a, they, he wasn't a good fit. Uh, but even last year, Texas gets to the lead eight. Um, and, and all season, people are like, well, does Texas have, Texas doesn't have bigs. Texas doesn't have bigs. Well, Texas was a, they got to the lead eight and had a double digit lead um, without Dylan DeSue. So they had enough to get to a final four um, last year. This year, you know, look, they, I think they were one guy short as far as they needed a little bit of ruggedness, just a little bit of what Christian Bishop gave them, um, you know, because I think Caden shedrick has got a good skill set. Obviously, had shoulder surgery on both shoulders in the offseason. Dylan DeSue was out for eight months. He's never really had an offseason at Texas because of all the injuries. Uh, so I think Texas could have used a Christian Bishop rugged type defender. I'm not – it would be it would be great to have a six eleven guy, right? And and Texas is trying. I mean, they went out and got Caden Shedder, a bigger guy than what they had on last year's team. Uh, but you know, we'll we'll see what they can do in the portal. They they've got to get. They need to get a rugged big uh, that can just be a paint defender, a wall up defender, uh, and, and and can rebound the basketball. But if you're going to do that in college basketball, you're if you play two bigs, the other guy has to be able to shoot it. Or you have to have everybody around that guy has to be able to shoot it. Uh, that's the reality in college basketball. It's a spacing game, um, and you cannot have two non-shooters on the court at the same time. It, it, that makes it very tough to get to where you actually want to go. Um, Jesse Patlin says, "No, not I'm not sure. Not NBA talent. I'm not sure if uh, if he's talking about a a singular player." Um, or not, but I, I didn't see your original question. Uh, oh, it's just Caden Shedder. I don't know where that's going in the comments. No, Caden Shedder's not an NBA player. I, I, I didn't say it. I don't know who. Um, I, I don't know if anybody else has been saying it. I did not say that. Um, but Brock, Brock played hard, but needs to play smart. Uh, look, I, I think we'll all appreciate Brock Cunningham more when, when he's not at Texas. He just, he, you know, look, I, I the one tonight was a tough one. That That was a really bad one. Uh, for me, for his, uh, oh, seems like every game flagrant. Uh, but that guy was playing with a fractured thumb on his shooting hand. Made a three tonight, stepped up, made uh, free throws the other night, plays so hard. He makes winning plays every game. They're not going to be in the box score. He may, He's a guy that I think we'll probably appreciate more when he's not at Texas. Um, and Brandon Cook Mitchell's not strong, not even strong around the rim, more of a uh, more of a finesse offensive player. Um, he, he wants to be a wing. That's going to be way out in his development. He's going to have to get a lot of confidence, a lot more confidence shooting the basketball. Uh, he's going to have to change up that release a little bit long term. Um, yeah. Oh, Jesse Patlin saying there's no present or future NBA talent in this team outside of DSU. Uh, possibly. Uh, possibly. I, I don't think that's a, a wild statement at all. Uh, and I think that's what will be interesting next year uh, with Rodney Terry's. He's got a couple of NBA guards coming in, but they're still going to be freshmen. If you look around, if you look around the college game, I mean, Kentucky, uh, the other night when they lost to Oakland, uh, their freshmen did not look like NBA players in that game. But they're going to be NBA draft picks. And that's that's kind of the big difference in college basketball now is, um, you know, you can have NBA players. The freshmen can come in that are future NBA players, but they may not look like NBA players when you need them to. They may get drafted high, um, but that, that's going to be the kind of the tough thing uh, next year for Rodney and in, in his staff is meshing it all together. 
Um, you're going to have really talented guards, bigger guards than Texas has had in a long time, more skilled guards than Trey Johnson, but they're going to be freshmen. So you have to be experienced around those guys uh, to maximize what, they're, what Trey's going to be able to do in his one year at Texas. I think Cam Scott may be a two-year guy unless he totally blows up. Um, so any uh, Barrett, uh, Barrett Evan asks, any portal players out there that you'd already target? I think Brandon Garrison, a uh, big man out of Oklahoma State, who's in the portal. Texas finished top three in that recruitment. He's that kind of 6'10", broad-shouldered, rebounder, rim protector, but very limited offensive game. So if you go out and get a player like that, you have to have shooters and scores around him because that's not a guy that teams are going to have to really defend. Um, that doesn't mean he can't improve from year one to year two, but right now at present, he doesn't really have a go-to move offensively. He's, he's more of a role player, but a really good role player that can defend that can protect the rim, and that can rebound. But a guy like that, I think you'll see uh, Texas uh, go after. But I think a lot of the guys uh, are, that Texas will target are yet to go in the portal. That's um, that's my opinion. Somebody has uh, somebody said the real evaluation of uh, uh, Rodney Terry will be next year. I tend to agree with that. I think year one was okay. You made the tournament. You won a game, right? You, Texas has won a game, first-round game in the NCAA tournament. For three years in a row. Now, there's only eight teams that have done that in college basketball. Kansas is 17 years in a row that they've won around the 64 game. Gonzaga, I think, is 14 or 15 in a row. Creighton is six, five. U of H is six. Baylor's around four, I think. Then it gets to Michigan State, Tennessee, and Texas. Those are the only teams in college basketball that have won an NCAA tournament game in the round, the first round game, three straight years. Uh, so, you know, you give Texas credit. They got in the tournament. They won a game. Um, I thought tonight, I mean, I'm going to reiterate, I thought tonight was an embarrassing loss. Uh, it, yes, Tennessee's a two seed. Yes, they're a very good defensive team. Uh, but Texas pretty much kicked the ball around for, for 30 minutes. And, you, you know, look, 17 turnovers. Uh, but 12 of those, if you, you go back and look at the tape, 12 of those are going to be unforced. So that's just not going to get it done at this level against a good defensive team. Uh, you give away too many possessions. You cannot give away that many possessions against a, one of the top defensive teams in the country. Bottom line, and, you know, look, you played good. Texas played very hard. They played very good defense on the other end. Uh, Tennessee shot 34% from the field. Texas, as crazy as it is, actually shot a higher percentage at 36-4 versus Tennessee's 33-8 in that game. But you cannot give up that many possessions in a game against a good defensive team in the round of 32 and think you're going to walk out with a victory. It's just not going to happen. Um, somebody's asking, will Tyrese, um, Tyrese go to the portal? I have no idea. I have no idea um, what, what Tyrese Hunter will do. Um, I'm just not, I, you know, I just, I just, I just don't see, I just don't see it at Texas. They're, they're, the fit's not there um, for him. I think he needs to he needs to hit a reset button. Um, and, and I know some people are saying Steve Booth sloppy, not embarrassing. You know, I'm just going to disagree uh, with that. I thought that was embarrassing. You know, Tyree Center had three turnovers on inbounds passes. He traveled on an inbounds pass just like he did against Miami last year. Go back and watch the Miami game. Watch when that travel on an inbounds happened and watch what happened within that run in that game. Um, so that that's embarrassing stuff. You can't you can't do that at this level in this game. I mean, and then, you know, look, Texas still had him inboundsing until they absolutely got late in the game and had no other choice but to take him off the inbounds. I would have taken him off the inbounds way before that. It was clear Tyrese was mentally melting down. You can't let him keep inbounding the ball at that point. You're giving away possessions. You can't give away possessions at this level in these games. Can't happen. Um, so I, by the way, um, uh, and stepped out of bounds on the end line. Yeah. Texas had two of those that were tough they Had two of those it Horton had one against CSU where he made a three early in the game when Texas ran some good curl action for max, you know, and that's the other thing is it go back. If you really want to go back and watch Texas this year, go back and watch the UConn game early in the season before Tyrese Hunter really, it, it, it became clear he was not going to have a good year with ball in hand. 
meaning they couldn't run offense through Tyrese Hunter. If you go back and watch the UConn game, you'll see what Texas wanted to do offensively this year. They didn't want Max to have the ball in his hand the whole game where teams could hard hedge and just get the ball out of his hand. Because what do you, what ideally what Texas wanted was to have Max in the ball with the ball in hand and play in the two-man game when DSU got back healthy because that's a really good two-man game. But they also wanted Max to play off the ball. They, if you go back and watch the UConn tape, you can find it on YouTube. They run a lot of curl action, a lot of stuff off the ball to get him the ball on the move to where he can turn, face up, make a play off the dribble, put him in a position where a defense is rotating, and then he can attack. But once it became clear that Tyrese Hunter could not run the team this year and just wasn't it wasn't going to happen, then they had to put the ball in Max's hands the rest of the season. And that allowed teams to take Max out easier. Now, with the two-man game, once Disu got back, that was Texas' best offense. That was their best chance to ma maximize this year. But that obviously that means Disu and Ace must have to shoot it well because Disu is going to take a lot of perimeter shots. Some argue too many. But once it became evident Tyrese was not going to be able to run the team, get you into the action smoothly with timing, that kind of shifted. So if, if you want to know what Texas want, ideally wanted to do offensively this year, go back and watch the UConn game uh, and watch what they did with Acemas off the ball in that game. Um, Caden Shedrick tells Noach, yeah, I mean, look, Caden's already transferred. He's transferred once. Um, that Leaving Texas now would not make any sense at all. Uh, he should. He's going to have an off season to get the shoulder stronger, continue to get stronger, continue to develop his skill. Um, and next year, he's a heavy minute player uh, for the Longhorns. So uh, that would not make any sense. Uh, uh, that would not make any sense for him to uh, leave the Texas program. Texas still needs two bigs, though. They still got to have two bigs. Caden Shedrick's a key part of a team, for sure. They need two bigs, and one of those bigs has to be able to face up and shoot it a little bit. Um, I think we have another super chat. Okay, there it is. I know CDC is going to give Terry the ability to put a quality team together. Is it put, possible to put together a Final Four team, put a Final Four team together in the portal? Um, I think it's possible. I, I still think that the, the high school recruiting and development has to be a key part of it. You have to piece it together. Uh, you, you know, you're you have to be experienced enough. Uh, this Texas team was experienced enough, by the way. I mean, Max Aismas had played in the Sweet 16. Tyrese Tunner played in the Sweet 16 in Elite Eight. Dylan Mitchell played in the Elite Eight. Brock Cunningham, Elite Eight. This is Dylan DeSue. got hurt, but obviously played in around the 32 game. Uh, watched from the bench with a boot on in a Sweet 16 and Elite Eight game. Caden Shedder could have been in the tournament, right? So Texas had a lot of experience. They had enough adults in the room. Uh, they had enough maturity on this team. Um, for sure. You can do it out of the portal, but I still think high school development is so key to it. But the tough thing in basketball now is it, I'm just interest, interested to see if Kentucky keeps Calipari, if he adjusts his recruiting, uh, because I, it's so difficult to have really talented freshman guards and you have to lean on them in the tournament. That's the tough thing now is you saw what happened with Kentucky the other night. You Maybe there's that special guy out there. Maybe it would have been a Scoot Henderson had it, there not been a G League Ignite when he came out of high school, right? But some of those kids will still go to overtime elite uh, if they just don't want to go to class. Um, they don't want the college experience. Maybe there's that special guy out there. But the majority of your guards are, are going to be experienced players. I mean, you look at San Diego State last year um, and, and how physical – and grown the, those guys were um, to play that physical game, to play those high pressure situations. So, is it possible? It is possible uh, for sure. But I think there's got to be a mix from the high school level and that development mixed with the portal. Um, and for Texas, uh, portal at point guard is going to be big, but that guy needs to be a threat. He needs to be a threat to shoot it. Now, Ziegler became a threat, even though he's two of 12 and one of eight tonight, one eight from three. Ziegler became a threat for Tennessee from three over time. Uh, so if you if you can find a version of that, uh, because he's a pest defensively, he can guard the ball. Uh, he's got really good anticipation off the ball. 
but he be- made himself a threat. He became a threat from three here uh, in, in year three at Tennessee. So you're going to have to find somebody who can shoot it uh, from that point guard position. It can't just be a drive and kick guy. Uh, it's, that is, that's not what Texas needs. They need multiple guys that can shoot the basketball. That's what the college game is. It's a floor spacing game. And that's where the game of basketball is going to continue to head. So I don't know. Uh, questions. Um, Je- Jesse Patlin, they're talking in the chat. Um, he's saying guys are missing this point. No point guard cause a loss. Um, yeah. So look, that's kind of where Texas got into some issues this year is you ideally wanted to play Max on the ball and off the ball. Uh, because Max is a very good basketball. He's a very good college basketball player. What you didn't want to have to happen is him to have the ball in hand 90% of the time and get initiate your offense 90% of the time. If that happens and you play against a good defensive team that can push your offense out to 28 or 30 feet, then that disrupts the timing and flow of it. And if Tyrese Hunter's not playing well at the other guard spot, then you have issues. Uh, and that's where the issues came into play. Um, so if, if Tyrese Hunter had taken a step this year, um, which he was never a pure point guard, but if he had taken a step this year, that would have enabled te- Texas to play Ace Miss off the ball, on the ball, and make them a tougher team to guard. Uh, somebody's asking, is Tyrese uh, coming back next year? I mean, I I don't know. I don't, I, I'd be surprised if he's back at Texas next year. I'll say that. Um, at Kenny Matthews, how good can Kendall Weaver get? So, look, uh, I think Kendall Weaver's going to have a career in basketball. I'll say that. He's going to will himself to it, if nothing else. Um, Kendall Weaver, look, here's the background on Kendall Weaver. At Mansfield Timberview, they lost in a state title game, I believe, to Beaumont United. But Kendall Weaver, even if you watched him in high school, unbelievable athlete, tremendous competitor. He always stepped up like he did in the NCAA tournament. That shouldn't surprise anybody that saw Kendall Weaver in high school. The crazy thing is he had one offer, maybe two Division I offers coming out of high school. He went to UT Arlington, was the freshman of the year in that conference and transferred to Texas. Uh, He's going to will himself to have a career in basketball. What level that is, that's all going to be determined on how well he shoots the ball over time. Uh, But he is a hellacious athlete a high-end competitor, a tremendous defensive player. He's got some. He's got to work on his guard skills. Sometimes where he gets into some issues is he'll turn his back to the defender. If he gets a little uncomfortable, he'll turn his back. Once he gets that out of his system, keeps his eyes on the floor the entire way, he's going to take another step. Then the final step for him will be catch and shoot from three. He made one tonight. I think he's better than what he showed this year. I just think it was a tough fit at times when you're transitioning into a new team. I expect Kendall Weaver to make a pretty big jump next year on this team. Will it be – is he going to magically become a 40% three-point shooter? I don't know about that. I'll be surprised if he's not 33-35 next year because I can guarantee you this. When the lights come on, he'll be in the gym, and he'll be the one turning them off. That's just Kendall Weaver. That's the way he's wired. He's been wired since high school like that. He's been part of winning teams the whole way through. Um, Like I said, Mansfield Timberview, that team lost in the state title, made several good runs. That guy, he's and I said this when Texas recruited him, I said he was a different player than Sir Jabari Rice, but they were wired the same. And Jabari Rice has pretty much willed himself into a career in basketball. You know, if you look at him, he's slight a build, right? He's not the tallest guy. He's not the longest guy. He's not the best athlete out there. But what he has done, that guy, you never question whether he was going to maximize what he had and be a sponge and learn the game and do everything he could to develop. Kendall Weaver's a different player, but it's going to be the same with Kendall Weaver, no doubt about it. Uh, He's going to maximize what he can. He's going to go as far as he can in the game of basketball, and he's not going to have anybody tell him he can't do it. Same thing with Jabari Rice, lightly recruited guy out of high school, went to New Mexico State, right, and then ends up at Texas' his final year, and he's a two-way contract player making seven fifty dollars or more a year. Uh, I think you're going to see Kendall Weaver do things similar in his career. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're – somebody saying playing Tennessee close was a miracle. 
Only if you watch Tennessee against St. Peter's did you think it's a miracle. But here's the here's the thing though. Remember, if you if you didn't watch Tennessee all season, or if you hadn't watched St. Peter's, St. Peter's is one of the worst offensive teams in college basketball. They believe I believe they're 343rd, 345th out of 351 teams in field goal percentage. St. Peter's shot under 40% as a team this year. So if anybody just to watch Texas and Colorado State and said, you know what, I'm going to tune in to watch Tennessee too, uh, and you watch them blow out St. Peter's, and if you didn't do background on St. Peter's, St. Peter's couldn't throw it in the ocean anytime. They shot 39.5% as a team this year. So Tennessee blowing them out, makes if that makes people think Tennessee, oh, whew, just a miracle you've played Tennessee close? No. No. I mean – Tennessee lost by 20 in the SEC tournament in the Mississippi State. Mississippi State couldn't score against Michigan State. So, no, I mean, Tennessee's a good team, very good defensive team. They had an off night. Texas had an off night. Tennessee missed more clean looks than Texas got. Uh, but, no, Tennessee's not a juggernaut. They're far from it. Um, they're a really sound defensive team that plays really hard like all the Rick Barnes teams do. And Ziegler's a great leader. A great leader in the program. Uh, so uh, that's that's what I would say. That Leon, uh, we got a super chat, Matthew um, from Dylan Mitchell. All year gave nothing offensively or defensively. Um, the defensively, I mean, look, he's he's kind of an in between player. He's not going to be a rugged four man defender in college basketball, but he has versatility defensively. You can use him in the switch in the ball screen game. You can use him to pressure and hedge in the ball screen game. Um, he's got to get more physical, right? Uh, but he wants also wants to be a wing developmental player, which that's a long ways off for him. We talked about that last year. It's going to be 24 years old before he really sees that type of development um, or has a chance to develop in that regard. Um, but, you know, he showed some improvements this year. I think he needed they, – they, Texas needed a little bit more offensively. Uh, from him, but defensively, he had some versatility to him. Um, so somebody saying doesn't seem like Mitchell's developed at all. I think again, I would say this about Dylan Mitchell, and I say this about a lot of college guys: is some of that development won't come till way down the line. Uh, for the guys that really have to develop an offensive game, that's not going to come until way down the line for those guys. And and and, and the reason I say that is, is, is so think back to when. And I'm not comparing the two players. Please don't get me wrong. But when P.J. Tucker was at Texas, he was a 6'5", 82-inch wingspan, low block scorer. What did he take, five threes, four threes, his entire college career at Texas? He literally had to go overseas to build an NBA offensive game. And then he, he came back and made it in the NBA and had a great career. But when P.J. Tucker – left Texas, did anybody think he'd be shooting a lot of threes in the NBA and playing as a 3 and D type of player in the NBA? Or did anybody think he'd be the guy spotting up in the corner making threes in the, in, in the NBA playoffs? It takes time for some of these guys to develop. And I'm not comparing P.J. Tucker to Dylan Mitchell. P.J. Tucker was a great college player and was the Big 12 player of the year. But his skill set wasn't going to translate to the NBA. He literally had to go overseas and build an NBA offensive game. And then he did it, and he had a great career, made a heck of a lot of money, owns thousand pairs of shoes. Uh, but So some of these guys' development is going to be way after they're in college, and they may have to take different paths to get to that development. And then you see how bad those guys want it and who's really going to develop, man. Uh, so uh, I, any other – Matthew, you can bring up questions, man. Anything you got? Uh, somebody's asking, you still got UConn. Look, um, I do have UConn uh, is my favorite. Um, does that mean they're going to win it? It's hard to win it back-to-back, -back, right? The last team that's won it back-to-back -back was the Florida Gators under Billy Donovan, I believe. It's tough to get it done. Um, does UConn have the parts to get it done? Do they have the coach to get it done? Yeah, they absolutely do uh, because they have enough rim protection. They have enough rebounding. Cam Spencer is a tremendous addition out of the portal for them. Uh, just such a really good all-around basketball player. Um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, ben Jackson said, glad, glad I've calmed down a little bit. I really haven't calmed down. Um, I'm 
I haven't calmed down. Uh, I, and I don't, I, I don't think I should, or I don't think I will for a while, honestly, because, uh, you know, so many unforced turnovers in this game, three turnovers on inbounds passes. I mean, just that's losing basketball guys. I don't know what else to say. And it's losing in an, an embarrassing way. I mean, three turnovers on inbounds passes, one to travel. That's an embarrassing way to go out. It, it, it really is. And you give Tennessee credit for being a good defensive team, uh, but 17 turnovers, if you go watch the tape, I'm guessing 12 are unforced. And it was just lazy passes, soft passes, easy to defend passes, um, passes when you have a little pressure at the feet of a teammate. None of it. None of it was good or winning basketball. And and I think it's embarrassing that Tyrese Hunter w- was still inbounding the ball with, what, seven minutes to go in that game. Shouldn't happen. Absolutely shouldn't happen. So, no, have I settled down a little bit? Maybe a little bit. Am I still as agitated? Oh, yeah, I'm still as agitated. Don't 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 get it twisted. <laughs> so um, so we'll see. Uh, um, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, but it, uh, Matt, any other questions you can bring up? That was just not a good brand of basketball tonight. Um, that 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 was not winning basketball is what that was against the team that you knew was going to play really good defense. You just can't you can't have that many turnovers. Um, you know, W. A. Jones it was like he was indecisive in the middle of his passes. It was a uh, it, it was a it was a tough go, man. Um, that was a mental meltdown in a big game, is what that was. And a credit credit for coming back and making a couple of plays late um, in that game, but um, the first thirty plus minutes of that game was about as ugly as it gets uh, for a guard that started one hundred and six games in uh, major college basketball and high major basketball. No doubt about it. There's no other way to slice it. I hate to be mean, but it is what it is. It's a grown up. It's a grown up game. These guys are essentially professionals at this point. So it is what it is, man. Uh, this is Tyler Sylvia. What does roster construction portal look like for next year? Um, so I think a lot of it, Caden Shatter comes back at big as a big. De- Devin, like I mentioned, Devin Pryor's development is going to be key because he's a six, seven wing. Uh, he is the type of wing Texas needs in the college game. Is he going to be ready to be that heavy minute player next year? He graduated from high school a year early, even though of, he was already of age to graduate from high school. But he graduated high school a year early, used it as a, as a development year. Um, so that is going to be key. What, How many minutes of quality basketball he can give Texas next year? Uh, because he's got talent. He's athletic. He can play off the dribble. Uh, he can shoot the basketball. Um, so that development is going to be key. Trey Johnson, Cam Scott come in. I think they're two future NBA draft picks. Okay, I think Trey Johnson's a first-round guy after one year. He's he's going to be better 6'6 shooting guard than anything Texas has had in a long time um, at that position. Cam Scott, 6'5 uh, guard that's really improved shooting the basketball. Uh, shot mechanics are much better as a senior. But you're going to be putting a lot on two freshman guards. So point guard out of the portal is going to be key. Two bigs out of the portal are going to be key. One of those guys got to be able to face up and shoot the basketball. Um, if you can get all those things done, look, Texas will be back in the NCAA tournament next year. What will they do with it? We'll have to see. Um, but uh, they are uh, – Kendall Weaver will be back next year, obviously. You know, it'll be interesting to see what Texas does with him next year. Uh, does he start? Does he come off the bench? He's going to play starters minutes regardless. Uh, but he brings such an energy off the bench that – if he's your sixth man, I could get it. I could get with it, uh, depending on what the rest of the roster looks like, uh, especially at guard. But if you started him, I can get, I can see that too. But he has so much value off the bench because Texas is going to miss Brock Cunningham's energy off the bench next year. They're going to need somebody to provide that for them. Uh, and it could be Kendall Weaver in a starter minute role, but off the bench. So we'll see what Texas does. I think he's just going to – he may just push his way through, though. We'll have to see. Uh, we got a super chat from Nigel Robertson. Um, Calipari one and done doesn't work with NIL. Texas two – That that's kind of what we were talking about earlier. I'm interest, interested to see if Cal's back at Kentucky next year, and if – I'm not saying he is or isn't – if if he's going to change his approach 
because those guys, he's got multiple NBA players on that team, multiple NBA guards. But against Oakland, those guys look like freshmen, even as talented as – I mean, Reed Shepard had been mocked number one. Now, this draft is a terrible NBA draft, right? It's not a good NBA draft. But I believe it was ESPN maybe it had mocked him number one overall, three points around the 64 game. Um, he had had a really good year, but you get in the NCAA tournament, um, it, it's a different game. You have to really – uh, though the freshmen can tend to struggle in that game. You look at how Tennessee bullied uh, Duke out of the NCAA tournament last year. Kyle Filipowski was one of the best freshmen in college basketball last year. He had a tough go against Tennessee last year in the NCAA tournament, in that round of 32 game. Uh, so, you know, it, it, I agree. I, I think you, can, you, you have to have balance with freshman and player development and out of the portal. You cannot go freshman heavy in college basketball anymore. You can't do it. These You can't have a five- or six-man class and have three freshman guards playing all 26, 28 minutes. You can't have that scenario. Um, I do agree with you now, and that's what I'm I'm going to be interested to see. If Cal is back at Kentucky, how much is he going to change his approach? Uh, because I think he'll have to a little bit. I totally agree with you. Um, I'm not going to uh, – I'm not going to get into a co you know coaching stuff here, um, you know. Uh, so out Jonathan Miller outside of 2024 freshman uh, class, I don't think you start anybody uh, or you don't start anybody on this team who returns. Look, I mean Kendall Weaver. That's what we're getting to with Kendall Weaver. Uh, Kendall Weaver is um, he's got so much value off the bench. He can play starters minutes. Uh, and I think he will next year, but his so much value and energy off the bench it makes him it makes it tough to throw him into that starting lineup because with Brock leaving, you got to have somebody to bring that energy next year. And, and we'll see what they do in the portal. Maybe they find a guy in the portal that can bring that. But right now, as you look at this team, Kendall Weaver off the bench as a sixth man. Look, Jabari Rice embraced a six-man role, played starters minutes, was in the game uh, at the end of the games when it mattered. Being a great free throw shooter was obviously part of that. But he embraced the role. He knew he would excel at that role. And one thing he told Texas when they recruited him, I'll be your sixth man, but you're going to have me in the game at the end. You're going to want to have me in the game when the game's on the line. So you can embrace a role like that and still be a top three player on a team and play starters minutes. So it'll be interesting to see what Texas does there. Um, Michael Williams, thanks for the super chat. How does SEC play compared to Big 12? Uh, I think the Big 12 is a better basketball conference than the SEC. I think the SEC has, uh, similar to football, uh, different, but they have long limb, really good athletes in the SEC. Um, they, you know, Bruce Pearl is going to play that type of game. Um, you know, you're going to have more maybe longer athletes. Uh, Nate Oates is going to have a number of those guys, but he's going to do it in the floor spacing, shoot the basketball, NBA type of style. Uh, but you're going to have a lot of long limb, athletes that can get up and down the floor in the SEC. Um, and, then, you know, you have so many different coaching styles in that league, too. I think I think Coach uh, Golden at, at Florida is one of the up-and-coming young co coaches in college basketball. I think he's really, really good. Uh, they lost a tough one the other night. But you have a bunch of different styles. Rick Barnes style, different from Bruce Pearl's style, right? I mean, you just kind of go through the league. Um, and, you know, you know, Chris Beard's going to play tough. He's going to be similar to Rick Barnes. You're going to be, have to play really physical. You're going to have to play really tough. Uh, they're going to guard you. They're going to take away your inside shoulder in the ball screen game. They're going to do a lot of really good things defensively against you. They're going to do it with physicality and toughness and maybe try to bully you out of your sets at times is what, which, what they should do. So there's a lot of contrast in styles, um, and we'll see if there's any coaching turnover in the SEC. That's the one thing. We'll see. Muscle him back at Arkansas. They just try to get back to the NBA. We'll see. Is Cal going to be back at Kentucky? We'll see. I mean, I think we know what Kentucky fans want, but what's going to happen there? Uh, but it's a, it's a very athletic league, um, and I think there's some young coaches in the college game. What Nate Oates still young for me in the college game. Nate Oates, Golden at Florida. They got some really good young coaches uh, that do a good job offensively as well. So it's going to be it's going to be a fun league. Because there's so many different styles of basketball, so many different coaches with different styles, but you are going to have to be very athletic, game in, game out in that league.
Uh, Matt Myers says, spoiler alert, next year we're going to be bad. I look, we'll, we'll, we'll see on that. Uh, we'll see on that. Texas, uh, Texas is going to have actually legitimate NBA guard talent next year. So uh, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, you know, uh, what is this hookum says we need Calipari because Calipari needs a fresh start. Uh, you know, I don't know about that. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, he needs to, he's going to have to change his recruiting approach in college basketball. Uh, but and I, that's why I'm inter interested to see what he will do if he, if he, if he's retained uh, by Kentucky. Um, uh, Bote Botex knows. Okay. Good question. Does Texas ever look at any overseas recruits? Uh, Texas has dabbled overseas. That's for sure. They've looked at guys. Um, look, that's a tough, that's a tough area that Texas had a big from NBA Africa um, come visit um, in January, late January. He's going to, he's coming down to Texas, Arizona, USC, but he may also just go NBA. I, I don't think he will with the G league ignite blowing up now, but he had already interviewed. He kind of go, going through that process a little bit as well. Uh, Texas is looking that in that direction for sure. Um, you know, look, the coach at Arizona is the is the guy who has done the best job recruiting overseas. Um, and when he was at Gonzaga, he did a great job getting those overseas guys, some really talented overseas players to that Gonzaga program. And now he's doing that at Arizona. Uh, so you have to have strong connections, years of connections overseas. But Texas has – they've dabbled in that. They were dabbling in that under Beard, and I know Texas is uh, dabbling that un under RT. And like I said, one of the top players from uh, the NBA Africa um, Developmental League, he's already officially visited Texas, and we'll see what happens there. But he's, he's a big-time difference maker. But, again, he'd be a freshman in college basketball next year. So uh, we'll see. Um, uh, St. Rex St. Charles, any potential players you would go after if they become available? Um, I, I do like Brandon Garrison who, from Oklahoma State, who's in the portal. If you look at what Texas needs on the interior, Brandon Garrison would be a guy that fits that. 6'10", long arms, broad shoulder, good, good rim protector, strong guy rebounding the basketball. Had a good freshman year. At Oklahoma State, he'll you know he'll make a jump from year one to year two. Thing with him is you got to put offensive players around him because he's not really an offensive threat. He's that guy that more of that rugged interior defender didn't shoot it well from the free throw line necessarily doesn't have a go to move one year into college. So Texas needs a guy like that for sure. But you have to have offensive players around that guy as well because you're going to be forced to play a little four on five. So you got to have guys who can go get their own shot, and you got to have four guys around, the three guys that can shoot it, and then that fourth guy's to be able to score. It. So that that's what kind of that's what makes the college game tough and more interesting because that floor is a little more condensed since the three point lines at what twenty one seven instead of twenty three nine. So if you're going to have a guy like Brandon Garrison, you got to have offensive guys around him. But that is one player that I believe Texas will target. Um, I think they're already targeting him. Uh, Texas finished top three in his recruitment out of high school, and he is a broad shoulder, rugged guy, type of guy that I think Texas needs and has the athleticism and toughness rebounding the basketball Texas is going to need in the SEC. All right, so um, Matthew, I don't know if we have any more questions. Um, Hookham says Texas need height. Shooters, one big. I think Texas needs, you know, with Caden Shedrick says he's coming back, which we all expect. I think still think Texas needs two bigs. Uh, Nick Cody's still going to be a freshman in college basketball. So, and he had a knee surgery, knee injury that cut his senior year sh short. So they're going to need two bigs in the portal. One of those guys has got to be a face-up player, though. You can't. You're going to lose Dsu. You have to have somebody that can face up and help you spread the floor. So they need two bigs. One's got to be able to space it. Um, shooters. I think if Texas takes a portal wing type of player, that will be a guy that can shoot the basketball a little bit. Um, the, the interesting thing with portal recruiting is this, though. How many guys jump in the portal and then come to a school, go to a school with the expectation of just being a role player or not being a major minute player? That's where recruiting in the portal gets interesting for, for college teams is, oh, yeah, this guy looks like good. He'd be a great fit here. But did, he, did a guy jump into the portal to be a role player? 
There are very few Jabari Rices out there that jump into the portal and say, oh, I'll be your sixth man. That's great. Um, because he was so confident in himself. And he told Chris Beard and Ronnie Terry and those guys when he was recruited, he said, I'll be your sixth man. That's fine. But I'm going to be on the floor at the end of the game, and you're going to want me on the floor. So, again, that's the tough thing to find. That's what makes Portal so interesting is Texas needs a wing shooter. But those these guys all know Trey Johnson's coming in, Cam Scott's coming in, the Kendall Weaver kid's back. Um, how many minutes are there as that wing shooter? Guys aren't jumping in the portal. It'll go be a 15-minute player. Uh, so that's where the portal recruiting gets interesting. Um, so we, I've got time for a couple more, um, and then we're going to get out of here. Um, so Jesse Patlin. Um, yeah, they, they, Brian, Byron Murphy was a stud at DeSoto. There's no doubt about that. Um, Jerry, who's the best college coach? Um, I, D Dan Hurley's up there. Uh, uh, he's up there for me because he's he's done such a great job in roster construction. Um, he's put the pieces together in the college game really well. He's evaluated the high school kids in that 40 to 70 range extremely well. Hawkins, who's in the NBA now, NBA now as a first rounder. When he came out of DeMatha, he wasn't a top 10, top 20 guy. He was ranked in that 40 to 70 range, developed over a couple of years. Donovan Klingon, not a top 10 guy. He was 7 1, maybe he should have been. Not a top 10 guy, more of in that 40 to 50 to 60 range. I think most service, somebody may, may have bumped him up a little bit as a senior, uh, but I thought he's done a great job with roster construction. You look no further than Cam Spencer and his evaluation with his team this year. You look at what they – and Caravan. Again, Caravan was a was a highly recruited guy, but not a top 10, top 20 guy. I think he's done a good job with player development there. I think he's uh, done a good job evaluating the high school level guys that he can develop. But you know what? Caravan can shoot it. That's got – Texas got to find somebody like that. You know, you have to find – in this college game, you have to have a face-up guy that can shoot the basketball. It's so important in the floor spacing. I think Dan Hurley's tremendous, though. I, I think he's uh, – uh, hey, hey, hook him. No manscape read. I, I think I think, I think think there was enough manscaping in Charlotte tonight. I don't need to give the read tonight. Um, so, uh, uh, Michael Williams, what's up with Chris Johnson? You know, Chris needs – he needed a developmental year, had a little bit of an ankle – um injury at times this year uh but his thing is gotten he's got to shoot it better um he's done great yeah what chris has tremendous feel for the game he has really good vision he's a combo guard really good vision though he sees the floor well he also trained with tj ford since i don't know since what he was about 10 or 11 uh, so he has a great feel of how to play in the ball screen game and a great understanding of angles in basketball. TJ does a tremendous job teaching that down at TJ Ford Academy. By the way, one of my one of the things that has made me most frustrated the last two years, and I don't have the answer, guys, is Tyrese Hunter was recruited to Texas. He was the Big 12 freshman of the year. He's net Texas has never sent him to Missouri City to work with TJ Ford. I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. You literally have the guy to go send your guard with to work. Never happened. I'll never understand it. I've, I've been in the gym with TJ, I don't know how many times, just to watch him work with guys. The NBA guys come in there in the offseason. TJ is a great, great, not good, great guard instruction guy and developer of guards. And the fact Tyrese Hunter never worked with him, I, I just blows my mind, but I don't have the answer, guys. Um, uh, other people asking best coach. Well, look, Jay Wright was the best coach in college basketball, but he's now maybe the number two commentator in college basketball, right? If not number one, uh, Jay Wright's a tremendous basketball coach, a guy that similar, similarly to Dan Hurley did a great job of high school evaluation. Like he had very rarely had guys ranked top 10 in the country. He had guys that ranked in that 30, 40 to 70 window that ended up playing above their ranking and developing really well under Jay Wright. So Jay Wright was the best coach in college basketball when he retired, no doubt about it. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Rick Barnes, solid coach. Nate Oates is Nate Oates is a solid coach, 
that has a lot of upside because of he fits the, the, the game. He fits the offensive game. He fits the college game. He actually fits the NBA game. Uh, so there's a lot of popularity there with Nate Oates. Um, so uh, what well, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Caesar. Tonight must really pain TJ. Hey, TJ was in a tough spot tonight. Rick Barnes is like his second father. Obviously, he's in the stands with Texas gear on. He's going to be cheering for the horns, right? Um, uh, there's no doubt about that. TJ is – Bobby Burton called him the connector. Like, we had Sean Rogers on On Texas Football a couple of weeks ago because TJ connected me uh, with Sean Rogers to get Sean on. TJ loves the University of Texas, great ambassador for the University of Texas. Um, Texas just needs to get their guards down to work with him, in my opinion. So – um, Larry, Larry, the GM says embarrassment question mark. Yeah, for me, that's a, tonight was an embarrassment. Um, tonight was an embarrassment. Um, um, I've gone over it a, a few times. And uh, I, if you look at the score and say 62 58, played Tennessee a two C close, um, great. If that's what makes people happy, then that's fine. Um, that's that's your prerogative. For me, this was an embarrassment tonight. Um, you have 17 turnovers. 12 of those unforced. Tyrese Hunter had three turnovers on inbounds passes alone. Won a travel on an inbounds pass in the NCAA tournament for the second straight year. Go back and watch the Miami game. See how that helped aid, it, aid the, uh, the run for the Hurricanes. Um, it, it, was embar- it was embarrassing. I mean, you, this is not the way to go. This is not the way to go out. Yes, Tennessee's a good defensive team, but you're kicking the ball around for 30 minutes, making unforced turnovers, making unforced errors, sloppy passes, soft passes. Three turnovers on inbounds should have been four. That's embarrassing. This is not youth league basketball. This is round of 32. You go home if you do those things. And Texas went home tonight. And they deserve to go home tonight. And they played hard, and I give them credit. But they, you deserve to go home, go home. If you travel on inbounds passes, you have three turnovers on inbounds passes, should have been four. You're sloppy with the basketball, soft passes on the perimeter. Ziegler's going to take your soft passes from your hand. Yeah, that's embarrassing. I thought it was embarrassing that Tyrese Hunter was still inbounding the ball with seven minutes to go in the game after clearly melting down in the first half. That's embarrassing to me. Now, I don't know any, any way to put it. Tyrese Hunter should not have still been inbounding the ball in the second half of that game. No chance. That's embarrassing to me. No way around it. It's not the way to go out. It's not the way you should go out. So you can, if you play well and you get beat, fine. Ten, you give Tennessee credit for being a good defensive team. I get it. But the turnovers on inbounds passes, traveling on inbounds, still having the same guy inbounding the ball after that, it's embarrassing. It's not the way you go out. Sorry, I'm just never going to agree with that. So. Uh, missing shots, not as embarrassing. Uh, somebody's asking Kelvin Sampson, number one coach. I think Kelvin Sampson's a Hall of Fame coach. I think he's a great basketball coach. You know, uh, U of H is, you know, the thing for them is they're going to have to score 80 points in some games, 78, 80 points to win a game somewhere. Um, and, and that's always been kind of their issue. But we'll see if they get it done this year, if they get the right draw. You know, but if you come up against the UConn, you're not going to smother them defensively and hold them to 58 points. They're going to score against your good defense. So then what are you going to do against them? You're going to have to score the basketball. Um, And But U of H is dealing with injuries. I mean, a a lot of people, if they don't follow it closely, Terrence Arso has been out most of the year. It's a big loss. 6'6 guard, wing player, had some versatility. And obviously the freshman Tugler has been out as well, who's a rim protector, very long arm guy. So Houston – Again, last year they were banged up going into the tournament. This year, not the same team that they were when you looked on paper at the start of the season. Terrence Arso is a big loss for them um, in the grand scheme of things. And then with Tugler going down, um, uh, that they lost a rim protector um, and a very long arm, versatile defender for them. So they're not the same team they were at the start of the season. Um, but uh, say, Jeff Aiken said 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 that about Baylor. They choked. Uh, Gonzaga, Baylor shot 41.5% from three as a team that year. Yes, Mitchell is a very good defender, but they, they were the number one or two three-point shooting team in the country that year. They blitzed U of H from the three-point line in the final four. That That's kind of my point, is if you, you get in that game, what are you going to do offensively 
against a good offensive team that's a, a very good offensive team that can play good on defense. That's kind of my point. Like, you have to go score. If you play UConn and they score 74 against you, you got to be able to score 75, 76 in that game. And that sometimes has not been that style of play. Now, Tony Bennett eventually, eventually got it done at Virginia. Uh, but Tony Bennett had three NBA guards on that team. Three guys that had careers in basketball, off two of them off and on in the NBA, more in the G League and overseas. But he had three pro guards on that team. Um, and they could really shoot it. Again, that team shot around 40% from three. That Baylor team was the best three-point shooting team in the country, I believe. They definitely weren't the high major. Uh, so they could play defense, but they could shoot the lights out from multiple positions. Uh, and then they had one rugged defender, Mark Vidal, who was undersized but played well above his size and rebounded the basketball. But uh, that Baylor team could shoot the heck out of the ball. Um, so – We'll see. Uh, guys, I think that's going to do it uh, tonight. Um, you know, Texas season's over. Uh, I would say this. Okay, good season. Uh, you're back in the tournament. And, and it, for those that have just joined this late, Texas has won a in first round, round of 64 game three years in a row. One of eight teams, I believe, in college basketball that's won a round of 64 game three years in a row. Uh, the others are Kansas, who has won 17 round the 64 games in a row, which is unbelievable. Ultimate tip of the cap to Bill Self on that. I didn't believe Gonzaga's at 14 or 15 now. Houston's at six. Creighton's at five. Baylor's at four or five. Then you have Tennessee, Michigan State, Texas. Um, and I may be forgetting one other, but that was it. Uh, two teams had a chance to get in that uh, in the round of uh, 64, but St. Mary's and TCU had won NCAA tournament games two years in a row. Uh, they lost. So, again, Texas is three years in a row. They've advanced to around the 32. You give Texas credit for that. Uh, that's a big turnaround for a program that had gone through a dry spell. Um, but here, here, here's the reality. Tonight, just not, that's not how you want to go out. That's not how you want to play. That's not how you want to go out. Uh, that's, you know, Texas got to do a better job in game timeouts next year. They got to improve there. Uh, they got to con – you can control the game. A little bit more uh, than waiting on TV timeouts through runs all the time as well. Uh, but for, thanks for everybody for joining in. Texas has a good year, uh, didn't end well, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what Texas does in the portal and how they put this roster together in year full year two under Rodney Terry. Uh, so thanks everybody for joining in, and we'll talk. Be back Monday for coffee and football. Uh, we also have a Longhorn live stream tomorrow night. I think Bobby Burton, C.J. Vogel. We have. I think CJ and I are going to break down the SEC quarterbacks, talk SEC quarterbacks with spring practice underway for everybody. Uh, how did the SEC quarterbacks stack up here headed into the season next year? So thanks all for joining in, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.